Hey everyone, what's up? So we all heard the news. Uh, Jaron and his boots signed with Matchroom. Now, this opens up a lot of argument amongst the boxing community, especially here on YouTube. And we know that a certain group has basically, no matter what, has stuck to one <laughs> one particular faction, faction, which is the BBC. And you guys, you tried to latch on to Boots. So I'm just wondering what's gonna be the story moving forward. Is Boots now a betrayer? Is he a backstabber? Are you guys gonna be realistic about the situation? Um, whenever I think of PBC, I think of Stephen A. Smith, how he always make fun of the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> and he'd always say like, you know, what can go wrong will go wrong. And that to me just sums up PBC like, Man, that just sums up PBC. You guys are the Dallas Cowboys of the, it, it's a clown show. It's always a clown show. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I know this Amazon Prime deal thing. I, I mean, again, the fact that they were going with the Keith Thurman versus Tim Tazu fight. I don't know if they dropped the pay-per-view numbers for, um, what's his name? Fundor and Tim Tazu, but again, uh, they probably don't even need to. When you look at fights such as like the Ch Jamel Charlo brothers, when they, you know, had their own pay-per-view date and things like that, plus they used Andy Ruiz and whoever else, none of those pay-per-views were successful. And you guys would sit here and talk crap about Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, with, with working with Chicken S-H-I-T, was still making chicken soup. You know what I'm saying? And I had a discussion with this with the Canelo fan. Like, it's about money. It's not about money. Because Crawford did double what a Jamel Charlo and his brother did. You understand? So it was never about money. It's never about money with these guys. It's about safety and comfort. It's about easier route. That's just, that's just how boxing is ran today. You know what I'm saying? These guys, they will turn down their highest paydays and their best legacy fights for even less money. You know, um, and it's all coming down, you know, full circle once again. This whole charade is just, it, it, it's tumbling down, guys. And you guys need to start getting with reality. I've been saying this for the longest time, man. I've been saying this for the longest time. And even all the crap that I took when I was covering fights like the, the Porters and even the Brooks and even Errol Spence, man, I never gloated on you guys. I never did. You know, I always took... <laughs> I wasn't like, you know, whatever else talking crap, you know, I just told you guys, this is, you know, you're going to grow up in this. You're going to earn your GED. You know what I'm saying? You're going to earn your diploma now being a new found boxing fan. When you come to find out, you know what I'm saying? Your first love, the puppy love that you're going through, you know, you're going to experience heartbreak and things like that. I didn't try to gloat on you dudes when I was telling you this stuff, you know, uh, another thing too is I don't make it about race. I treat all your hype jobs the same. I promise you I do. And the proof is on my video. I'm not gonna sit here and say I don't have my own prejudices and biases. But I've been telling you guys, man, you're all the same to me. The Lomachenko fans are no different than the Deontay Wilder fans. You all come with excuses at the end of the day. And I just wonder what's gonna be the new narrative that you guys used to boast about. You know, we control the narrative. What's going to be the new narrative? What's going to be the new damage control about boots? You know, um, <laughs> the man had two opportunities to fight Terrence Crawford, but he was doing that PBC Al Heyman type. Let's do some backdoor. Uh, in some cases, I suspect literally and figuratively. PBC is just a weird company and they move so funny. And I never understood how people could get behind this type of company. You know what I'm saying? Um, you started off, you know, free TV and everything else, network television, and then everything, even fights that aren't even, wouldn't even be uh, headers on network television. You're trying to charge pay-per-view. You know what I'm saying? Um, guys, this has been a fun ride, in my opinion. I've just watched people get defeated. And I used to do this. I used to clown the Pacquiao fans and whoever else, man, you know, um, I never liked fads. I really don't. I never liked fads. And every fighter, it's the same tact, whether the fighter's white, whether the fighter's Hispanic, whether the fighter's black, they all use the same tactics. Uh, you know, PBC and certain groups who affiliated with it, they would hate on guys like GGG, but you're here playing the same game plan. You know what I'm saying? You're doing the same tactics. 
you know, um, same matchmaking, all kinds of tricks, boardroom fighter type tactics. Again, it's all PR, you know, and again, I always gave PPC their credit when it came to the PR. Their PR game is basically second to none, in my opinion. You know, they know how to get people to really believe in something, you know. I'll give them that, you know, but as far as creating real Hall of Famers, uh, you know, real great fighters and things of that nature, the things that you, you want to promote in a sport, you know what I'm saying? Um, the, you went too far with the theatricality, you know, and all the tricks and all this nonsense. Um, and it's to the point where it even damaged and hurt your own fighters. Um, now I've heard some things about Booth Ennis. I'm not gonna go on talking about that. Um, obviously, if you're not active, you're, you're not making money. Plus we know, um, you know, he sued his last uh, promoter or whoever it was, you know. So he's been going through some things, man. And I hope this teaches him a lesson. Um, as far as competition, who, can, who he can fight, that would deserve a video on its own. Who is he gonna fight, you know what I'm saying? Even with that match room. But he's now approaching the point where he's starting to maybe has the chance to finally catch up to guys like Devin Haney and even Tiafima Lopez, man. Those guys, they went out there, uh, they took control of their uh, careers. Uh, they were a mouthpiece for themselves and they did true big boy things. They didn't do this type of stuff that Boots and his father were doing. You know what I'm saying? Um, just plotting and scheming in the back. Devin Haney and these guys, they've been making moves. And they're even younger than Boots. So, you know, and they've already accomplished more than Boots. Regardless if you guys like either one of them or not, you know, you just gotta call a spade a spade sometimes. Um, they were really putting their, their eggs in the basket though with whatever, you know, PBC and Showtime was feeding them. You can be on the Canelo undercard. Uh, we'll give you Mario Barrios. It's out of the same playbook that we've seen so many times with all these other fighters, Spence, uh, whoever else, Tank Davis, you know. Um, <laughs> it, it's just laughable to me at this point, you know. And uh, I want to see Boots be successful, you know, but we always on this channel, I got to call a spade a spade. You got to catch up to guys like Tiafima Lopez and, uh, you know, guys like Devin Haney young entrepreneurs that put, you know, sold themselves and everything else. You know, I, I know that Devin Haney and what's his name's fight, which, which is a fight I'm not interested in, to be honest with you. Uh, I haven't even been paying attention to stuff, but I see they're having problems with selling tickets and things like that. Again, boxing, you know, this is part of the problem when you're just, you just assume things are good, but you don't set up a foundation. And you got to make it a sport again, man. You know, um, it's always a uh, a hit and run type tactic that they always do. They always try to run the bank and they're always trying to pull a heist, essentially. Uh, they're never trying to put back what they get back into the sport. And it, you're starting to see the sport crumble. And Boots, right now, he's managed to get pulled out of this because, again, he's going to get some some stay busy fights here in a minute, you know. Um, but there's so many other fighters that they're sitting on the show as well. And it's like a lot of these dudes are young. A lot of these dudes, like even a me machine, I've been interested in wanting to fight all the competition that's out there. Uh, the, the sport has the means to build itself back up. It doesn't have to be in the state where you got to put your eggs in the basket, like in a fight, you know, featuring Keith Thurman and Tim Tazu. You know, that never made sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. You know, the way these guys are moving, a way a lot of these people are moving today. You know, just go back to the grassroots part of boxing. You know what I'm saying? Get these guys out there. Uh, me and Machine, you have so many fighters that could go on one card. You know what I'm saying? And even if they win and lose, it's still cool. Because, I mean, a lot of those people, they're entertaining. Stanny Onis. You have so many fighters that are so entertaining and have, uh, you know, they can offer to the sport of boxing. And we don't have to play this exclusive, exclusive you know, uh, it's only going to be on pay-per-view type deal. You can keep these guys busy, man. You know, have them fight each other. Um, even though Mario Barrios and whoever else in there, that's cool. Mario Barrios is entertaining. He's going to go out there, go out and show and everything else. He's going to bring the fight. But you have all these chess pieces that you can use, and you're trying to always just utilize a few of them. You're just trying to util utilize Canelo. You know, you're just trying to util utilize this guy, Spence. You're just trying to utilize the same people. And a lot of these guys, even a Keith Thurman, they're kind of at the end of their career uh, as far as rev relevancy and like 
not even really being a factor anymore. But even those guys like that, you can stick, just make a huge, massive card and have all those dudes on there, even if they're fighting bums. It'll still be a, a better uh, step in the right direction than what they're continuing to do right now, which is continually to shoot themselves in their own foot. Uh, you know, it even got to the point where LRB and others, you know, uh, Tim Smith, CEO of PBC, they're telling the fans that you're not even going to buy this pay-per-view. And it ends up being one of your highest sellers, the Spence vs. Crawford fight. And again, instead of doing all this complicated nonsense that they like to do today, and it's not just the boxing industry that does this. Movie industry, everything else does this today. Just listen to the fans and give them what they want. You know what I'm saying? It, it's never been rocket science. It's always been simplicity. And this world has forgotten desperately about how simple things, uh, you know, how simplicity can just work out in your favor. You know, one plus one equals two. We don't need to do all this crazy stuff. We don't need to sit here and tell everybody that a man can have a baby, yet we can't define what a female is. And I see the same type of dumb confusion basically in all like platforms and everything else. And to me, it's just stupidity. You guys aren't even making money. Disney just reported how they lost so much money, you know, um, and you're here just trying to push all this nonsense. And it's no different with the sport of boxing. It's been no different with a guy like Al Heyman. And Al Heyman, I do give him this. He's been hiding. Uh, there's reasons why he hides. I can tell you that much. Um, you know, but he's burned so many bridges. You know what I'm saying? And again, uh, it's just, you know, what, what can go wrong will go wrong. They need to consider their leadership, just like Disney, for example, that we just brought up needs to consider who you have employed as your leadership making these decisions. You know, you just got to be real realistic about the situation. But I would really love to see Boots get in there, just get in there and fight whoever just to stay busy. You're still a young kid. You know, uh, you still got a lot of maturing and growing up to do. You know, uh, I still don't like what the, him and his dad did with Bud. Again, the plotting and scheming, you know, playing that horror deal. And um, this stuff, it's not helping the sport at all. It's not even helping... You know, you got a belt, cool, and you managed to get belt out by, uh, you know, what's his name, with the zone, Eddie Hearn. But again, uh, you, you kind of wasted a lot of time. You're over here suing people and everything else. You know, you had opportunities to fight Terrence Crawford, and you guys even said it. The same line that I heard even Sean Porter's dad say at one point, we're loyal to this guy, we're loyal to that. You know, and that company ended up failing. You know, where's Steven Espinosa at right now? Is he... Is he employed by PBC? You know, these guys that always try to scheme, sometimes just plain good old fashioned business, you know, <laughs> you'd be surprised what, you know, what you'd be able to do. Um, instead of just thinking about all this plotting and scheming and crap like that, it's better just to be more upstanding um, in your practices and things like that. I'm just telling you, man, uh, don't try to cheat people. Maybe you'll get that customer to come back. Instead of here trying to fake it till you make it all the time, claiming that you have stars while you're traveling from network to network to network, just like a prostitute. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's just crazy to me, the world today, guys. It really is. Um, that's just initial news. I'm not seeing anything else again. Who knows who Boots is going to fight? Um, I saw that, oh boy, he's going for a different... It was a Crowley. He's going a different direction. So again, I don't know what's going on when it's concerning boots. Uh, we know that Eddie Hearn can pull up a UK domestic fighter at any time, you know, and in that regards, you're just trying to get boots back into the mix and you're just trying to, you know, um, kind of showcase him, you know, uh, sell him like the greatest thing since sliced bread, just like they do everything else. But Again, you got to start closing that gap on guys that are even younger than you. Teofimo Lopez, yeah, his career's been a roller coaster, whatever else. You know, he's failed big and he's won big. You know what I'm saying? I still respect that more than what Jerron Innes Boots has done in his career. You know, and you got to start catching up to even guys like that. You know, um, we'll see what the future holds, but I thought I'd give my two cents on this. We will talk to you guys later. Bye.